As of this recording, the major media outlets are reporting that the blue wave has crashed upon Congress, just as they predicted. The Republican pundits have stopped talking about the red tsunami they predicted, and I sit here thinking about the purple tide which I thought would happen. I think that they remember how flawed the polling data was in 2016. Like I've said before, that blue wave could be a lot of Democrats saying goodbye to Washington. In a way, we were all correct, but we were all wrong, too. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. As it sits, current predictions are that the Democrats will pick up at least 25 seats in the House. They needed 23 to reclaim control, so it looks like Nancy Pelosi may get to be Speaker once more. That could still change as there are some unexpectedly tight races in California, but let's assume that it holds. The GOP and the Senate just picked up four more seats, with the Mississippi special election headed to a runoff among the top two candidates. Let's also assume that these numbers hold. So far, the Democrats have picked up five governor's seats as well. Again, let's assume that this number holds. So we will have a five-seat majority for the Democrats in the House, a ten-seat majority for the Republicans in the Senate, and a six-seat Republican advantage among state governors. Is this the end of Donald J. Trump and his policies? Probably not. Is this a mighty blue wave? Um, no. Just, no. It's not a blue wave, nor is it a red tsunami, nor is it even the purple tide that I thought. The GOP gained ground in the Senate, where they've been soldiering on through a narrow majority to confirm several key nominations by narrow margins. I give the credit for this to Senator Charles Grassley of Iowa more than anyone else, for his steadfast approach to running the Senate Judiciary Committee. His actions showed proper leadership, and I think that we are seeing the benefits of this in the election results. The message to the Senate is, keep doing your job. Here's some more leeway to push through the rest of those nominations. Get busy. The House may now be Democrat, but only by a narrow majority. To understand, as an absolute measure, a five-seat majority in the House is actually narrower in function than a two-seat majority in the Senate because of the differences in the size of both bodies. Representative Nancy Pelosi may be speaker once more, but I wish her luck getting much done. Five seats isn't really enough to manage a party-line approval of a broad platform of policies, much less articles of impeachment. They can hold up the budget, true, but that's about it, really. The Senate will squash the more partisan bills before they get to the White House and forget about getting a conviction on impeachment proceedings without some strong evidence. The state houses stayed a lot more in favor of the GOP than I think the Democrats had in mind. I read an article about inundating the president with lawsuits for violating the emoluments clause by newly elected Democrat state attorneys general, and I expect that this won't work very well, at least not with a friendly Supreme Court and a Senate poised to approve quite a few more nominees, including the judges that will be sitting in the lower courts that hear these cases first. If the House tries to slow down the government by refusing to vote out bills, that would just provide more time for nomination votes in the Senate. Oh, and I'd like to point out to the new Speaker of the House that Speaker Ryan was famous for not getting stuff done in the lower chamber, which is why he is the former Speaker of the House, which used to have a Republican majority. You see, I read the results this way. The House didn't act on their clear majority to get much of anything done, so they lost that majority. The Senate did a lot more with less, so the Senate majority was equipped to have an easier time getting things done. As for the governor's houses, well, each state has the right to decide based on how they feel their governors are managing things. I would guess that do-nothing governors and crooks just got their walking papers in most cases. 
Not really a massive blue wave, mind you, but not a red tsunami, either. The blue lapped a little higher than I thought it would, but if I could guess numbers exactly right every time, then I'd be claiming a Mega Millions ticket worth over a billion and a half dollars. It was a purple tide, like I thought, and yes, there are quite a few Democrats who are now lame duck incumbents preparing to make their blue wave out the window as they fly back to their former districts. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.